I like. I like sunshine. I don't know what it is, but I just like it. You know, bright sunny days, the ones that make you have to go find a tree and some shade. You know, the ones that make you put on your shades to look cool. <laughs> the ones that make you, you know, put on your sunblock so that you don't look so bad. <laughs> You know, so that you're not, like, getting cancer. But I still, I like sunshine. I've always liked sunshine. Maybe that's why I was born in the sunny state, California. I like being a Christian, because I like being in the sunshine. <laughs> I gotta throw that in there. You knew that was coming. Everybody uses that one. You know, sunshine, sun, sun. Get it? Well, okay. Can you hear that? I can. I think that's the lower. Or the lower. They're blowing things. And while we have the wind blowing in our tail, no, have a cup of coffee. It'll only be a minute or two. <laughs> oh, you hear it? Okay, we're going to get sick. Here's the new one. that takes care of the lawn and the yards and all that stuff around here because that is an apartment building. And because I live in an apartment complex, they take care of that part and I take care of this part. You know, kind of like the plants you see around me, kind of like the things I get to enjoy and I employ and using in video for a office that's living and alive, because I don't really want to be stuck up in a dumb office, you know, like kind of a high skyscraper. I don't want to be stuck in a back office, you know, like a lot of offices are. I don't want books and, you know, kind of like dusty, musty smell. I want to be alive, because my God is. <laughs> so, a couple times I've tried to do like inside videos. Just doesn't work. So, we're alive, <laughs> and we're alive, so to speak. But living in the upstairs and having a large patio, I get to grow things. Plants, you know, like over here. And what you can't see all the way down here is a whole lot of tomatoes. <laughs> Those tomato plants are becoming a jungle. They're going to run through the jungle. Boy, I tell you, picking tomatoes is going to be interesting. But praise the Lord, I get that. You know, I get the opportunity to do that with the reasoning behind I enjoy it, so God puts it into my life that I may give thanks to Him and appreciate that which He's provided for me. Because I can't afford to buy tomatoes. <laughs> I need to go grow them. <laughs> oh well. But every day, I like to look at what God has done with me and to me and see how much I have grown. Sometimes I like to examine myself to see where I'm at. Now I know for a lot of you guys, you know, there's there's a you don't have a problem examining yourself. You you know, you spend a lot of time in a mirror. Matter of fact, some of you guys spend more time in a mirror than some of you women. And I don't mean metro. And I don't mean gay. You know, homosexual. <laughs> I didn't mean gay like in the roses and froses and you know all the kind of words that we went, gay, oh boy. But rather those types of people that, you know, have decided to reject, you know, possibly the warnings that God has given that, you know, hey, you don't want to be doing that kind of stuff, you know, it's sin, so you want to be doing this kind of stuff, it's what I choose for you to do because I made you and you don't know how to do what you're doing, so don't do what you think you're doing when you're doing it that way, which isn't really so gay after all. But the point is, when we examine ourselves, we look at the mirror and we see, hey, huh, you know, I need to shave this stuff down here and this stuff up here. And maybe, you know, like, ooh, look, I got nose hairs. Ah, don't look. Ooh, I got ear hairs. Oh, no, I got a hair growing on my nose. Huh. Well, that's age. But when you examine yourself, you look and see what you need to change. 
rearrange, make new, restore, or make into something better. Sometimes, you know, women spend a lot of time in the you know, front of the mirror, you know, because they kind of got to do this and that, you know, and they, instead of going straight across, they kind of go curled, or they go up and then down, and then they kind of go like, instead of it being just like, you know, long eyelashes, it's got to be like, just kind of the edges are long eyelashes, so they can kind of, you know, wink it and blink it, you know, so that you look really cute. And then, you know, kind of like, you know, we don't want to blush, but let's put some blush on so that we look cute. <laughs> but the realization of knowing that we have something to improve upon is that which God tells us every day. We can improve upon our relationship with Him every day. We can improve upon our relationship with each other every day. Every day we are given the opportunity to start the day as an improvement upon yesterday by going forward today. Now you may have taken two steps forward and one step back, you know, kind of like that book, but why? Wouldn't you rather go three steps forward and no steps back? Why not? Hey, God never said two steps forward and three steps back or two steps forward and one step back. It's just a nice idea to remind you you're not perfect and God knows you're not. So do we. That's why we work together to improve ourselves. If I happen to see that, you know, maybe you arched your eyebrow a little too high, I'm going to tell you, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> you think I'm going to tell some woman she put her makeup on wrong? I don't think so. But if some guy did, I'd probably tell him. Of course, then again, I'd be wondering about the guy putting makeup on. Hey, <laughs> whoa, you know. Kind of like tattoos, you know. I can tell someone that, hey, you know, the Bible says you really don't want to be doing tattoos. But, you know, I, God knows that that's your choice. It's your choice. You can do what you want to do. Like tattoos. Do what you want to do. And a lot of people do that for a variety of reasons. It's popular right now. And television often influences a lot of the popular things that people do. It changes the way we do our appearance. It's kind of like, you know, why am I wearing a Hawaiian shirt? Ah, you know, it's one of those Calvary things. You know, all those Calvary people, you know, sometimes they get caught up into being like a Chuckite or being a Calvaryite or being whatever it is, ite that they think they are. You know, and so they put on a Hawaiian shirt, but then after a while, you realize, you know, wearing a Hawaiian shirt is actually a pretty smart idea. It feels good, it's comfortable, it's airy, and you know what? In the summer, it works. <laughs> Now, I'll be honest with you, when I lived in Alaska and I was, you know, out on the tarp deck, you know, when it was like the wind was blowing, 40 mile an hour winds, and it was 30 below, I wouldn't be wearing a Hawaiian shirt, <laughs> at least not on the outside. Boy, you know, kind of like, you know, the, the, the clothes fit the place sometimes. But in examining ourselves, sometimes we do put on certain styles of clothes or certain things we do or certain tattoos or things to kind of like, you know, make ourselves feel better. One of the things that God does when he says to examine ourselves, it isn't to condemn us. It's rather to remind us that we can feel better about ourselves. We can be encouraged. We can be exhorted. We can be lifted up. We can find ourselves in the grace and mercy of God and feel better about ourselves because we don't go by what we say about ourselves or even what others say about ourselves. No, we go by what God says about us. And you know, quite frankly, if God died for you, I think you're worth something. You know, you may not think so. <laughs> well, you know, that's the way you are. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just don't get the message. But God has a message for you. And he wants you to know you're worth something. You're valuable. You are a creation he has made specifically for today. He has caused the day to rise with the sunshine and to have clouds and to have rain and to have night and for you to experience it in his sight so that you could experience the way that you're changing day by day and that he's doing that by your interaction and reaction to what he says to you. Yeah. You know, he talks to you and you talk to him. That's why we have devotionals and that's why we spend the time to look at ourselves 
to examine ourselves, to see ourselves in the mirror, as we call it, of the Word, to see what God would say to us today. That's why I like daily life. It is the Word of God as it speaks to me. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness. My thoughts, they're not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Could you imagine God having a cup of coffee? I don't think He's doing Starbucks today. Whereas the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing wherever to I sent it. Not you, not me, not he, not she, not the pastor, not the other, not the deacon, not the whatever. But as I sent it. God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depths of the riches of both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. There are people that like to say, bluntly, God can't do and immediately they're wrong. Or God won't do and immediately they're wrong. Or God will do and immediately they're wrong. I'm sorry. Whenever you say God, you want to add the last part of that. Take from Romans 11, 33. Go read it. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past fighting out. You ain't gonna know it all about God. And God ain't gonna tell you all And I got news for you. When you get to heaven, you're still not gonna know it all. You're still not going to have all wisdom or all knowledge, or you're not going to get to heaven and suddenly say, Now, Jesus, you remember that single person? I want to know. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not even going to look back at this and think about it at all. Matter of fact, most of the time, if you think about this, how much do you remember of the everyday things that you did that were wrong in the past that you were embarrassed by? You know, those little embarrassments that went, <laughs> my zipper was showing. Or my, oh no, my zipper was down. You forgot about it, didn't you? I mean, unless it happened just recently, you know, and that's like, uh-oh, better work on that one. Yeah, oh boy. Better look in the mirror somewhere. Oh, look in the mirror. Hey, oh wow, you know, I look pretty good. Sort of. But remembering your past isn't a perfect exercise in looking at what God sees, who knows all things, because He has reasons that we are not perfect, and we know that if we were sitting in His shoes, but God never said you'll be able to sit in His shoes and make the decisions He makes. As a matter of fact, God says, don't do it. Don't judge. Don't think. Don't be. Don't act according to your way, but do it my way. Because you see, the only one who can sing Frank Sinatra's song, I did it my way, is God. From the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation and beyond, when we get a new book, and we will, there will always be His way as opposed to the way that we think we should go. God says it this way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not their own understanding. What? Huh? Huh? Can't hear that. Can't hear that. Yeah, it's like the world out there. You know, like the world's always trying to tell you to do it their way. You know, like... So we listen more attentively. We look more acutely. We watch more specifically for those things that God says to us as we read it in the Word. So when we do listen, grasp, hear, allergy, 
everywhere. <laughs> like, achoo! As we do consider those things, then we find ourselves recognizing that God is in control, and we're not. We're never going to be in control. We may be kings or priests or whatever you may think, you know, get some bunch of cities to, you know, kind of supposedly rule over, which actually means you're going to serve. But the fact of the matter is, God is God, and we are not. And we can trust in Him for that respect that we give to Him every day by letting Him lead us in the way that we should go. Because we really don't know what we should do, where we should go, or how we should act. Unless we ask Him, as He is said to do, every day. And so, when you examine yourself, make sure you find yourself doing the things that He said to do today, and not the things that you said you should do your way.